simplicity, and practicality. This is why we love Fujifilm. In recent years, I feel like I've seen this shift in photographers. They want a camera that's smaller, easier to carry around with them, and one that's simpler to use. It feels like those days where everyone just lugged around full frame Canon or Nikon DSLRs are no more and there's this new desire to downsize our camera setups. And along comes Fujifilm, the people's camera brand. There really is no other company right now that's making a variety of affordable small form factor mirrorless cameras that operate like film cameras and are just simple and fun to use. I've mentioned this before on the channel, but these cameras here, when I look at them, they, they make me want to make photos. Not a lot of cameras can do that, but when you have a camera that's this easy to just carry with you everywhere you go, this might sound weird, but it makes the act of making photos feel that much more possible, if that makes any sense. So maybe you're already part of the Fujifilm family, or you just recently joined. So in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing a few tips that I've learned um, after shooting with Fujifilm cameras that sort of help me make the most out of these cameras. Number one, take advantage of the physical custom buttons. This is something I think a lot of people can easily overlook when it comes to setting up your Fujifilm camera. These cameras are very simple in design, but the customization is actually very intricate. And you can really customize your camera in a way that benefits your approach to photography. I mostly shoot street photography and everyday style documentation, so I need settings that are easily accessible for me that help me shoot in a variety of different lighting conditions. And these settings are usually my photometry setting, lock exposure setting, autofocus, focus check, and ISO setting. They're all exposure and autofocus related, and that's because those are the settings I use every single time I'm making photos. So when it comes to the physical custom buttons, I make it a point to always set them to something that I use every single time I shoot. The less barriers I can have between me getting the photograph, the better. If I need to adjust how my camera exposes for a particular scene, I'll switch my metering mode to either spot or multi-metering using the photometry setting that I've programmed right next to my shutter. If I already have an exposure in camera that I like for a particular scene and I want to lock down that exposure so I can just focus on composition, I'll hit this button in the front of my camera, which I have programmed to exposure lock. So I can lock my exposure in camera and recompose without my camera rereading for the scene again and readjusting my ISO. I use back button focusing, so I've disabled that function off my shutter and I've programmed it to this back button so that my camera will only focus when I want it to. And if I want to double check that exposure or maybe make minor adjustments to it, I use focus checking to get a much detailed look. And then I'll manually use the focus wheel on my lens to make those minor adjustments. Make sure AF plus MF is enabled so you can do this. The bottom line here is think of all the settings you use every single time you shoot and make those the most accessible on your camera. That would be the physical buttons that you can program. Reduce the artifacting in your photos to get the best possible image you can in Adobe Lightroom. If you edit your Fujifilm photos in Lightroom like I do, you've probably been yelled at by some of your Fujifilm peers to use an editing software like Capture One. But they do raise a good point. For whatever reason, Adobe Lightroom just doesn't process uh, the Fujifilm X-Trans sensor properly. And that results in this artifacting you see in the image that looks like worms. You can actually quickly get rid of this in Lightroom just by right-clicking your photo and clicking Enhance. You'll get this pop-up window asking you two options, raw details and super resolution. You don't have to worry about super resolution being checked. That's just going to give a much higher resolution version of your photo. You wanna make sure raw details is checked and this will help remove that worm artifacting. Once you click enhance, Lightroom's going to start working on an enhanced DNG file and that's going to have less artifacting. Obviously you're not gonna see a huge difference if you're just posting these photos onto something like Instagram. But you know, if you're making prints of your own work or if you're you know, posting high resolution images on your portfolio or website, I don't see why you 
wouldn't want to have that reassurance you're using the best quality image you possibly could have. If you're not stubborn like me and you're more open to using a new editing software, definitely give Capture One a try. You can actually change the size of your focus area point. I'm sharing this tip in this video because this is something I did not know about for a very long time, and it's partly because it's a bit of a hidden feature in Fujifilm cameras. When you're in the focus selection window, you can actually change the size of this focus point by simply moving left or right on one of your function dials. Now this is really nice to have, especially if you use spot metering a lot like I do, because this point is also the point in which your camera is judging for exposure. So with the smallest sized focus point, I can actually have a much easier time determining where my camera is reading for the exposure in the scene. While we're on this topic of the focus lever, you should definitely consider disabling it after you've picked a good size focus point. Every time I'm shooting, I always accidentally hit this focus lever. And before, when I had this enabled to move my focus point around, as it is set to by default, I would always, you know, miss shots because my focus point was somewhere way off where I didn't want it to. So now I just stick to a center point focusing and I've disabled the focus lever. Know the benefits of shooting in both JPEG and RAW. I've mentioned this a bunch of times, but I shoot in both RAW and JPEG, and I mainly use the RAW files and have the JPEGs as a backup to you know, if I really enjoy the look of the JPEG file. If you didn't know this already, JPEG files, they render the film simulations a bit differently than if you had just put the film simulation onto your RAW file within Lightroom or Capture One. And that's because these are still RAW files at the end of the day, and you're going to have to edit the tone curve a bit to bring in more saturation and contrast to your photo. And personally, sometimes I can never really replicate the look of the JPEG file. And so in those instances, I use the JPEG file. You might be the other way around where you mostly shoot JPEG, but you will want to have the raw file as a backup in case, you know, you maybe shot an Acros and you wanted to edit a, a photo in color. Having the raw file will let you do that. Another benefit of shooting in both, especially if you're mainly a raw shooter, is you get the benefit of having the JPEGs serve as thumbnails when you're importing. I use a Windows system and for whatever reason, I don't know if it's different on Mac, but I don't see any image previews for any of my RAW files when I'm importing. But since I also shoot in JPEG, they serve as these thumbnails, so it's definitely helpful when I'm doing selective importing. Lastly, don't underestimate the P mode or other auto modes. Now on the channel, I've always been an advocate for manual or shooting in manual. And that's because manual is going to give you, you know, the most control over your camera and how it operates. But sometimes shooting in manual isn't all that necessary, especially depending on the type of subject matter you're photographing or just the way you make photos. And setting parts of your camera to auto actually might let you put more of your attention to things like composition, or just being more present in your environment looking for photographable moments. And so you could actually look at shooting in auto as giving you more control, especially if you constantly feel like getting the right settings in your camera is holding you back and taking away from your shooting experience. On my XE4 here, I've been actually using the P mode quite a bit. Maybe it's a testament to the camera's processing ability to determine a good exposure, but using the P mode in combination with spot metering, I'm able to get a pretty decent exposure the majority of the time that I use it. Typically, I'll let the camera figure out a good exposure, I'll double check it, and if I like it, I'll lock it in using exposure lock, which on my XC4 I have actually programmed to my Cubone. And freely from there, I can just focus on composition. So yeah, don't sleep on these auto settings, these cameras, especially if you're using a new Fujifilm camera. They process, you know, the, the scenes pretty well and these auto settings are getting more accurate um, with each generation of new camera. So you know, don't sleep on these auto settings. I know it's easy to look down on people who shoot in auto, but I wouldn't underestimate them. So that's all I have for you guys today. Fujifilm cameras are great and there's a lot you can do with them and a lot you can learn from them. So hopefully this gets you one step closer to making the most out of your own Fujifilm camera. I'm probably gonna go shoot with this and procrastinate editing this video. 
So as always, thank you guys so much for watching and supporting the channel. If you learned something in this video, be sure to hit the like button and comment any questions you might have. I'll try my best to get to all of you. Love you guys. See ya.